Hello. 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 Did the did the heat go out? Did it trouble the power? Yes. Wonderful to uh, see everybody. Um, being on or about six. No, sorry, Recording in progress. Uh, so it's being on or about six thirty on uh, March twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. This is uh, we in the Houston Conservation Institute Order. Um, in keeping with an act relative to extending uh, certain COVID nineteen measures adopted in the state of emergency declared by Governor Bayside November twelfth, twenty twenty two. Which we need immediate executive order from the Houston Regional Health Department. Uh, we will be remote in our Health Department offices forum. The meeting uh, is being recorded by audio and video, and uh, we will be broadcasting this on the Health Department Network on March 27th. Um, in order to establish quorum, uh, I just want to uh, alert everybody about Rules of Protocol here. Um, Madam Chair, Benson present. Crossman present. Hey, you're present. Lloyd Caldwell present. So uh, if we have a quorum, we will uh, proceed. Um, just as a, a note, um, 20 Leisure Lane, if anybody is uh, here for that particular project, uh, they have requested a continuance to the next meeting, Jennifer? Yes. Okay, so they have requested a continuance to April 10th. So just, uh, I know it's second on the agenda, but I don't want you hanging around if you don't need to. So, um, First up uh, tonight is 301 Purchase Street. Uh, this is a notice of intent to reconstruct an in-ground swimming pool. Do we have the applicant here? Yeah. We do. I promoted to panelists, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything yet. Took me about six times to get Nathan on there, but everybody else went on without a problem. Oh, there he goes. All right, that worked. Hello, Jen. Hello. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, other fellow board members. Uh, I'm the homeowner of 301 Purchase Street, um, David Requina, and uh, my wife is also here, Bethany Requina. We are here before you today because uh, our in-gown pool cracked. So um, at the end of last season, we came home one day and um, we found that all the water in our pool, half the water in our pool had been drained out. Um, this is not a project that we wanted to take on at this time, um, but our children do use the pool quite often, and we would like to get a pool in place so that they can have it for the summer. Um, we, um, we purchased this home about four years ago, maybe a little less than four years ago, and um, we had to remodel the inside of the house as it was empty for about two years and um, the the exterior was was on our list of things too but not not quite this soon um, as you can see on the plan the uh, current in-ground pool is partially so do, you, do, you want, Mr. McQueen, do, you, do you want me to put the plan up or would you like to share it uh if you could please that'd be great and uh i i did receive a note from uh Mrs. Carlino, and I just want, want the board to see that we do have stamped plans from the engineer. So I just wanted everyone to know that. I think that was my error when I, when I uploaded the uh, plans online, I, uh, I failed. Well, actually these are the stamp plans. So you do have the uh, correct drawing. 
Um, so if you look at right around the center of the page, the existing in-ground pool is uh, right there in the front of the house. Um, three, I believe 388 square feet of that, 338 square feet of that pool is, is within the 50 foot buffer zone. What we would like to do is put the entire pool in the rear of the house behind the existing garage, um, which is outside the 50 entirely uh, nearing the, the, the outer border of the 100. Um, the, the other item that we are requesting, uh, and it's on the west side of that drawing, just to the side of the existing house, is uh, in addition to the garage. We have a two-car garage now, but the existing garage is full of uh, stuff from outside in the yard, uh, snow blowers, rakes, lawn mowers. We, we don't have any room, so I, we can't get our cars in the garage. We can only fit one. So we would like that addition to put um, the uh, outdoor equipment. Uh, I have a log splitter. We have a few things laying around the yard. We have some staging, a few ladders. Uh, ideally, we'd like to put all those items inside and not have them out in the weather and um, out exposed. So. Um, on the in-ground pool, we are proposing a automatic pool cover for safety um, and um, uh, we, we are proposing, as you can see, um, a hay bale line and sediment control uh, on the west side as well as around the existing pool at the bottom of the slope or at the top of the slope. I think the engineer has to mark that out, but it, it appears that it's at the top of the slope and wraps all the way around to the northeast corner there to keep any, um, any uh, if we have any e erosion, keep it, keep it up on the site. We, um, we're not proposing to stockpile any material. We don't foresee that happening. Um, the, the plan of attack would be to get rid of the existing pool, Mr. Chairman um, and board, and then take, take the material from the new pool and bring it right to that hole in the front so that we don't stockpile anywhere on the site. And um, I don't think I have anything further, but with that, I guess I would take any questions. Madam Chair, Cook? Yeah, just a few notes. Um, just making a note that there is um, zone A, flood zone, 100 year flood zone um, near the, wetland side of the property, I believe. Um, it's not shown on the plan, but you should be aware of it. It will be listed in the order of conditions as a resource area. Um, which way are they driving uh, the soil from the new pool area to the pool that you want to fill? Uh, we would come around the edge of the garage right, right up into that, into the existing pool. On the left side. Uh, yes, correct. Okay, so with the I don't think we can get around on the right side. There's some. There's a few power wires on that right side that come down really low. So with the sediment control in that location, do you have enough room to drive around? Yes, we wouldn't excavate for the garage foundation until until the end. That would be the last thing. Um. And how will you get the water out of the pool? Where would that go? So we, we had that conversation today. So I guess it has to be um, it has to be taken out by a company, which I, I was unaware of that. So they have to come in and get it. There's not a lot of water left. Um, well, there actually is water in there now, and it's, a, it's actually seeping into the ground. Um, but it has to be pumped out. As okay, you know, so it, it's pump it into the into the yard. It wouldn't be pumped into the wetland. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, and then just during the site inspection, I notice a pretty large area of wetland that's um, 
are full of compost, so the compost will need to be removed sure. before sure. starting work. There's a little bit of um, concrete that I noticed near flag 320. Sure. Um, so that would need to be removed as well. Absolutely. Those are the comments that I have. Um, I don't. We, I don't think we have markers on the plan, so the commission may talk about the markers and the buffer zone, do not disturb signs. Okay. Um, so I think that, that um, what was the plan for uh, filtration on this field? Yes, we do need to. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're really soft, Rory. I don't know why. It's only you. Hmm. Give me a second. Okay, hopefully this is better. Much better. Yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so what, what, is, uh, what is the intention for filtration on this pool? What kind of filter? Um, so it's a saltwater system. So I believe they are proposing a media filter along with the saltwater. So using a, a cartridge or you can use sand or uh it's called media so it goes it goes in a housing and it's um it's almost like a sand just a very fine sand filter okay um okay so i mean i think that just from that standpoint we just don't want any uh backwash into the you know down that slope into the wetlands sure sure i mean you you are you planning on using the existing chain link fence? I mean, obviously a section of it will have to come down to move it, but are you, are you looking to replace it in, in its current location or are you looking to relocate that as well? No, we actually want to keep the fence right where it is. Uh, because we're doing the auto cover, the fence is not required, but we'd like to keep the four foot fence right where it is just, just for extra safety measures. Yeah, and the dog. And the dog, very true. Both of them. <laughs> um, what's the intention for the um, surface on the uh, apron around the pool? Are you, are you using uh, concrete or pavers, or what's what's the intention here? It, it would be concrete. So, do we have any calculations here on the impervious surfaces uh, in both? the no disturb zone and the buffer zone and the change that's going to happen here uh yes it's all the way at the bottom of the page mr chairman okay. if you look uh within the 50 we're proposing three well the existing is 338 and we're reducing that down to 20 square feet okay and between the 50 and the 100, you're going up by 700, 660, 670. I think the total increase is 300. Look at the total, we're going from 1528 to 1879. But in, inside, the, inside the 100, between the 50 and the 100, yes, we're going up um, 600 and change but is the concrete and yeah the concrete in the back in the front is going to be removed correct yeah yeah i i, I yes so yes to, to be clear to the to the public as well as the rest of the commission the question i'm asking is after we remove the 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 concrete in the front how much are we adding from both the concrete in the back as well as the garage um, addition and the front porch addition, which is in that, that uh, 50 to 100, most of it's in the 50 to 100. So that's that's the question um, here. So there, there, is there any intention to um, increase the the driveway width at all to, to access that? Or are you just gonna just sort of a storage area off the side of the garage? It's honestly just a, a storage area for all of our equipment. 
we, we don't have any intention on increasing the asphalt area whatsoever. Okay. Um, I think that's uh, it for my questions. Anybody else have any other questions? Real quick, um, any trees have to come down uh, by the garage to get around that at all? No. Okay. No, we don't. Um, and actually, if, if, if I could just add one comment to that question, of course. Um, there was a note um, that I received from Mrs. Carlino about some clearing in the resource area. Uh, I, I just want to be clear that, that pile of wood that's on the pallet it was not any clearing in the resource area. That was a tree that came down right, right on the corner of our driveway in the corner of the house last year in a windstorm. It actually came down on the house. Um, so I, we still have pieces of it on the side of the house, as I'm sure a lot of you saw. I haven't had time to split off of it, but I've been trying to chip away at it as, um, as, as, as often as I possibly can. But I haven't, we haven't cut any trees um, in, in that resource area whatsoever, not intentionally, aside from the ones that came down in the storm. Oh, yeah, I wasn't looking at the pallet. It's... Um pretty much the area near that flag 318 through 320 is um, noticeably fewer trees and shrub um, layer in that area compared to the rest of the property. Yeah, okay. Just, yeah, we, we haven't touched anything there. That's exactly as it was when I purchased the property. So I, I, I can't speak to any of that. Um, uh, any other questions from the commission? Um, why don't we go to public comment and then we can maybe talk a little bit about some of the conditions we might want to put on this. Um, any, uh, any public comment on um, 301 purchase? I don't see any. So I, I think that, you know, from, from our perspective here is, um, are we okay with the, the, um, the change in, um, in impervious surface of about 300 square feet in total? They obviously are moving almost 300, actually 300 out of the, the 50 and, and, um, and then increasing the 50 to 100 by about 600. So I'm just giving you a rough number there, the, the, the charts on the, the plan, but. Um, so we're, we're doing better on the, the, um, the no disturb zone and, um, but increasing on the 50 to 100, what are we okay with the filtration choice here? As long as we condition no pumping any uh, water into the, the wetlands and, um, you know, exchanging concrete for concrete here, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty big wash here. So, and I think, uh, even the, the porch, um, it's, uh, it's impervious surface, but um, you know it's on the front of the house, and you know I, I think uh, I'm, not, I'm not overly concerned by it. So, anybody have any questions, concerns, comments about all that? Good, good. So we're we're good as proposed here. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Jennifer, do we need a a, a waiver here from? from this because we're doing work in the no disturb zone even though it's a net change of, of positive for us i didn't think so because it was already disturbed okay um okay um mr requina i guess it's uh, you want to close the hearing and then we can we can vote that i just want to give you the option yes absolutely okay. Good, so uh, make a motion to close the hearing for 301 purchase. Second. Uh, let's call Phil Benson second. Roll call vote. Benson, aye. Crossman, aye. Andy, aye. Call Phil's aye. Um, any further deliberations about this? I think we'll just condition two things here. One is um, I, I'm going to let the agent um, work with the, the uh, homeowner to establish the position of the um, no disturb signs, uh, wetland markers. Um, and uh, just no pumping of the, the uh, discharge of, of pool water into the wetlands. Anything else from anybody? 
do we have to do you have to do the removing the compost or is that just going to happen? Yeah, yeah, sorry, we'll, we'll add that in too. Yeah, that, that's in the standard order conditions that Jennifer's already proposed to us. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, make a motion to issue a permit for work and order conditions for 301 Purchase Street noting. Uh, the um, applicant will work with the agent on location of uh, wetland um, markers, um, either on the fence or uh, on uh, the standard um, four by four posts and uh, no discharge of any uh, pool water into the wetlands at any time and removal of the compost uh, near wetland flag 320. Second. Uh, call fells cross and second. Roll call. Benson I. Crossman I. Spady I. Call fells I. Thank you. Thanks. You and your Thank wife. You. Enjoy. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. You guys have a great evening. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Um, next up is is uh, twenty Leisure Lane, which uh, we have a motion to continue. Uh, so a motion to continue twenty Leisure Lane to April tenth. Benson second. Also, Benson second. Roll call vote. Benson aye. Crossman aye. Spady aye. Call fells aye. Uh, next up is uh, 64 Meeting House Lane. This is a notice of intent to install an in ground pool. It is that time of the year. Uh, and we have uh, Peter Lyons uh, joining us here for Collins Engineering as a representative. He's up next, too. What's up, everybody? Can you hear me? Hey there, Peter. How are we? Good. How are you? Why don't you tell us about your project? Awesome. Introduce yourself for the record, of course. We know you, but the record does not. All right. Um, for the record, Peter Lyons with Collins Civil Engineering Group, uh, representing the homeowner at 64 Meeting House Lane. This is a application, um, a notice of intent for a proposed in-ground swimming pool in the rear of the property and a deck expansion. Let's see, I'm trying to share the plan. Uh, can we see this? Yes. Awesome. <clears throat> um, so again, back of the property, we're proposing a in-ground swimming pool, 18 by 36, and expanding the existing deck and patio. Um, that's the outer red line on the plan. That's the edge of the patio and a proposed fence around the pool. Um, to the rear of the site, we do have a bordering vegetative wetland line. The 50 foot buffer is shown along pretty much along the back tree line is the orange. The purple here is our 100 foot buffer. Um, so the work is taking place um, as close as it looks like about 60 feet, 65 feet um, to the wetlands kind of straddle on both sides of the 100 foot buffer. We have proposed an erosion control, a sedimentation control, starting outside the 100 foot buffer and wrapping around the entire project, including site access, as well as a soil stockpile area. Uh, we've proposed a dewatering pit location, as well as a crushed stone tracking pad uh, for this site access. We proposed three of the Eastern, Eastern standard conservation posts along the existing tree line in the back of the property. Um, there have been some recent wood chips uh, from trees that have fallen during the storms chipped up. Those wood chips were spread just inside the existing tree line and they're proposed to remain. Um, we show between wetlands flag one and two out back there's some existing compost and debris we've proposed to remove from the area. Um, quick notes about the pool, because I know it was mentioned in the previous hearing. Uh, this is a proposed freshwater pool utilizing cartridge filters. Uh, therefore, there would be no backwash. Um, we have the cartridge filter note on the pool, as well as the 
you know, the pump location shown. Uh, this is all occurring in existing lawn area previously disturbed. We are proposing one tree to be removed uh, within the 100 foot buffer. That's right where the pool and patio are going to be. Uh, minimal grading associated with this. Obviously, the top of the pool deck is going to be level. So we're just coming down about two feet in the backyard here um, to you know, provide an even safe, looks like about a three to one um, loam and seeded slope off the back of the pool. So this is a, I guess, pretty straightforward one. I, I think, did the commission have any questions on this that have not been addressed? Jennifer? Uh, the fee, the correct fee has been paid now. Um, so I had a note before that the tree canopy doesn't really reflect what's actually forested on the site. So there is um, some clearing within that buffer zone um, closer, you know, to get to the area where the compost is being dumped in the wetland. Just so you're aware of that. Um, and that's about it for this one. Um, yeah, it was hard to see with the leaf cover that was out there um, at, the, at you know, this time of year. So, um, but I could see the couple of piles of stuff in the mm -hmm. in the the uh, in the wetlands there. Um, I I don't have any questions. It's a rel relatively flat uh, piece of property here, so um, that's it to the advantage uh, of uh, this project for sure. Um, just Peter, I, I think in general, um, just if we could just. And Jennifer, just educate the homeowner about what those no disturbed markers mean. Um, going back there, and uh, I, I think uh, I think the homeowner probably wants to do the right thing if we tell them. So I think we'll be okay. Um, any uh, any comments from the commission on this? Any questions? Just just one. Um, when are you going to remove the stockpile? I, I assume that's just temporary. Yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, it's mostly going to be, uh, you know, obviously the pool is going to require some significant excavation. Right. Uh, some of the material will remain on site to provide the proposed grading changes in the backyard. Um, so it's more just, you know, a staging area and to allow us to temporarily stock pile the soil, you know, if needed or as needed. But um, no, there's no permanent, you know, or long term stockpiling proposed. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else from the commission? Um, any public comment on 64 meeting house lane? Uh, seeing none. Um, I assume we want to close, Peter? Yes, please. Uh, motion to close 64 meeting house lane. Spadius a second. Uh, call for Spadia second. Uh, roll call vote. Benson, I. Rossman, I. Spady, I. Caulfield's I. Um, any further deliberation from the commission? Um, Jennifer, you, I, I was out there and saw where the, the, the proposed conservation markers were. Or do you want to relocate those at all? I or think you... they did that in the revised plan and added the third marker, so they might be okay now. It, it, it looked better from when I was out there on, on Saturday, so. Um, I, I think that's probably fine. Um, any uh, any further discussion here for us? Okay, um, so seeing none, um, make a motion to issue permit for work and order conditions noting the uh, compost and debris in the wetlands must be removed. Benson, second. Call for Benson, second. Roll call vote. Benson, I. Rossman, I. Spady, I. Call for I. Um, Next up is 495 Turnpike Street. And we have Peter Lyons from Collins Civil Engineering Group as a representative. This is a notice, this is a request for determination, by the way. This is not a notice of intent for a repair to a septic system. Yep, um, give me one second to pull the screen up. I got too many windows open. Yeah, um, too many screens, too many windows. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, is the correct one up here? Is this turnpike being displayed? That is it, yep. Awesome. Um, 
All right, again, for the record, Peter Lyons with Colin Civil Engineering Group. Uh, representing the homeowner here, this is a repair of a failed residential septic system at 495 Turnpike Street. Uh, as mentioned, this is an RDA. Um, we have an off-site wetland on the east side of Turnpike Street. The 50-foot buffer falls at the you know, our edge of Turnpike Street. And the 100-foot buffer falls in the middle of the front yard. The existing field is in the back. Um, we're proposing to keep the existing septic tank and do a new pipe and stone leaching field in the front yard. Uh, as you can see, the back's just really tight. Um, we're trying to leave that existing septic, you know, abandon it in place. It is failed. Um, we did find more favorable soils in the front yard. So that's from a function standpoint, the place to put it. Um, we are within the buffer zones. We've already got a little bit of relief from the Board of Health to push it an extra five feet towards the house. So, you know, we're kind of doing everything we can to balance it away from the foundation, but away from the resource. Um, the wetland is across the street. There is a catch basin in the front yard, which ultimately goes under Turnpike Street and does connect to the wetland. So uh, we've proposed some protection around the catch basin as front as well. Erosion control uh, will wrap around the site, including the front lot line, um, because this whole site does slope from the back of the property down to Turnpike Street. So obviously this front erosion sedimentation control, um, you know, would be temporarily removed through the day and reestablished at the end of each workday. Um, our normal notes, you know, keeping the site clean and the street swept up are shown on the plan. Um, <clears throat> it's all in existing disturbed areas, a front lawn and paved driveway that we're gonna be going under. So, once it's done, um, no grading changes are proposed. It's going to be going back to you know existing conditions, so no long-term changes on the site. Um, that's about it. We got dewatering pit shown out in the front. Details for that, and our typical sedimentation control notes and details are shown on the plan. Um, any questions on this one from the commission? Jennifer? Uh, maybe just explain what WSC means on your double catch basin note. WSC, all right. Um, let's see. To be honest, I'm not totally sure on that. Let's see, what's note 11 say? I did not do the revision. Um, How many times do I have bugs fly at me in this? Um, I didn't see. notice, but so it's, it's number wet, 11, it's in WSC red here. Means, WSC means wetland and sedimentation control notes. Okay. Num number 11, so I, she's asking you to, to clarify what number 11 means there. Number 11 on the sedimentation control notes state to clean the catch basin grates and place filter fabric under the grates. And in the rear opening, and to maintain and monitor during work and remove after work is done. Okay, so you can't use filter fabric as catch basin inlet protection. It needs to be the proprietary measure. Filter fabric won't catch the fines. Um, the other, other note that I had, um, you talked about using straw bales, but you have a filter mitt. Are you using straw bales somewhere? Uh, looks like straw bales are proposed at the ends of the driveways, um, down gradient of the work uh, to be placed, what do we say? to be placed on top of filter fabric and butted end to end against each other. Okay. Moved area to be swept. So I guess that's just on the driveway portions as a 
a temporary system. Yep, and so I had asked for a detail for that. How are you gonna stake it into the driveway? It's just gonna be placed on top, right? Correct. Okay, so do you have that detail? Um, not on this plan that I can see. That's something you can do tomorrow? Yeah, I, I guess if there's not gonna be much to the detail, they're just gonna be placed on the pavement. Um, you know, we're not proposing pinning them or staking them in place. So, yeah, I mean, we can show the detail if the commission feels it's necessary, but I just, I don't think there's a whole lot of options, you know, for this. I think we have to update the note for 11 anyway. So, um, okay. so we might as well take the, make the effort to sure. clear about what's gonna be happening here. Um, Jennifer, anything else? And one more thing, the property owner isn't the actual owner anymore and they provided the new information today. Great. Um, any, uh, any comments from the commission questions, concerns? So I think that uh, just I think that there's two two concerns here, Peter, and that both are, are sedimentation control concerns. Um, in in as much as um, the construction detail shows that, that they're putting the the, the um, sedimentation controls back when they're they're um, after they've moved equipment through. That's got to be done throughout the day too, because this site is very steep. I mean, as you yeah. can see from the, the plans. Most of the time that stuff just gets removed and then put back at the end of the day. But on a site like this where it's pretty steep, I think that there has to be some some concern with construction notes here to say, you know, it should be in place at, at all times while uh, materials being uh, um, excavated. So um, obviously if they're backing a truck in there or whatever to take the material out, that's something else. But you know, I think that, uh, I think we have to do the best we possibly can here. This is very steep and it's gonna end up not even just in the road. I'm more concerned about getting it into the wetland across the street because that's a, a very odd basin. And I, I think you're only going to catch so much um, with the materials you're going to put in there. And so we, we've got to try and keep as much out of it before it gets there um, as possible. So I'm just a little bit concerned about it, to be honest. So that, that swamp across the street is one of the biggest ones in Easton, to be honest. So, so I, I think just... Uh, we should just make sure to, to make that note that the sedimentation control should be in, in place as as as, uh, as much as possible during excavation. So, sure. Um, I know that's vague, Jennifer, but you know whatever we can do to tighten up that language. So I, I you know, that would be better. That's what the contractor is bidding the project on, yeah. and then we go over it again at pre-construction meeting with everybody anyway. Right. So, um. I don't think I have any other questions. Any, any, any more comments from the commission? No. Okay. Uh, any public comment on 495 Turnpike Street? Seeing none. Um, I assume you want to close, Peter. Uh, yeah. So we're closing, and we'll just get your revised plans with those couple. Um, I, I, I think the, the couple of changes here are probably uh, appropriate for. A, a modification coming in the next day. So, yeah, that, that would be. I'd rather, I'd rather close and, and get this moving forward than uh, than to hold it up for another. Uh, yep. So are we uh, we can get that submitted tomorrow. Yes. So we would like to close, please. Okay. Uh, motion to close, four ninety five Turnpike Street. Any second. Second. Uh, that was Caulfield Speedy. Second. Sorry, Al. Um, <laughs> roll call. Benson, I. Crossman, I. Katie, I. Um, so, seeing no further comments or com uh, deliberation from the commission, I make a motion to uh, issue a negative determination. Oh, hang on a second. Termination of applicability under the WPA is a positive five and a negative three for the buffer zone. Um, termination in the bylaw is a negative two, uh, but it will have no negative impact. Um, you know, just please note the, the construction um, notes, Jennifer, about the hay bales. Um, and the applicant uh, agrees to submit modified plans 
uh, modifying number 11 in the wet wetlands mm -hmm. sanitation control notes, as well as detail about the hay bale um, um, use at the end of the driveways. Crossman second. Oh, very good. Call fellows Crossman second. Roll call vote. Benson, I. Crossman, I. Stadia. 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 Call, call fellows, I. Uh, very good. Okay, Peter. Um, I think that's it for you. I got uh, one more. We oh. got Hugh Washington. Oh my goodness! Thank goodness. Um, so uh, just as a, a just for the for clarification uh, on this particular um, project. Um, I've missed two um, presentations on this, so I'm no longer eligible to vote. I can participate in the discussion. I will chair it, um, but um, I, I do expect those that have had this fully under their belt uh, to participate and uh, get this thing closed. But I'll, I'll, I'll chair it and move everything forward and keep everything neat and in a row. So, um, but you guys uh, should go there, and you guys will actually have to vote on this, and I will not be voting. So uh, th we have a continued hearing for 2 Washington Street. This is a notice of intent for um, construction of a horse barn and paddock for an existing residential home. <clears throat> that is correct. Uh, can you guys see the plan? Yes. Awesome. Again, for the record, Peter Lyons with Collins Engineering Group representing the property owner here. Um, just as a quick recap, before we get into the changes, this is for a proposed horse barn in the rear of the property. We have wetlands to the north, to the east, and to the south. So we're looking to access the back portion through, um, you know, within the 50 foot buffer. This area within the 50 foot buffer is approximately um, 600 square feet which is proposed to just be cleared, but remain as dirt access uh, with a split rail fence on both sides. As we get to the rear of the property, uh, we're gonna do some selective clearing, saving the larger trees and provide a somewhat open, yet you know, still have a, a tree canopy up high, um, an area for horses. We're proposing a 24, or sorry, a single horse, I should say, we're proposing a 24 by 30 foot barn and an associated approximately 2,000 square foot uh, paddock area to the southeast of the barn. The 100 foot buffer, just for a reference, is our purple line right here. So there's a small portion of the site outside jurisdiction. However, we are proposing pretty much to clear up to the 50 um, and put a proposed post and rail fence around the project um, outside of the 50 foot buffer. In our last meeting, um, we spoke about increasing the mitigation area. Um, we've provided an additional 400 square foot um, expansion to the east and some um, additional plantings. That has increased from 1,300 square feet to 1,700. Um, this area is to be um, removed to the fill, <coughs> provide loam and you know new plantings with the upland seed mix included between the plants. Uh, excuse me, a couple changes from last time. We are revising this northern portion here. This area is now going to remain. So that's gonna help us cut down our disturbance numbers quite a bit um, by approximately 3000 square feet. We were originally proposing utilizing all of the area outside the 50. Um, our applicant has decided to just cross that off and basically leave this whole Northern portion um, wooded. So due to that, we did move the erosion control and proposed fence and conservation markers around um, a little bit in this area. Additionally, let's see, um, we provided a detail for that fence up the top, just a, a pretty straightforward, um, you know, double rail wooden fence to keep the horse contained, um, keep any expansion within the 50 foot buffer from happening, 
after the project. Um, not shown on the plan, we've provided the commission with a letter from the applicant regarding plans for the manure um, storage and also re occasional removal from the site. Um, I believe that was all of the plan revisions. Um, I don't know if Jennifer, anyone else on the commission had any other questions or comments on this one? Yeah, you had continued the hearing just for the revised plan showing the fencing in the paddock and the letter regarding the manure removal. Um, Peter, do you want to talk about the revised waiver today? The revised waiver. Um, yes, yeah, so we we submitted a waiver request in a brief. Um, we had a comment um, that the waiver should adequately address the public interest. Our response to that was that the mitigation area provided will provide food and shelter to the wildlife. Um, it'll provide increased water filtration, um, improving water quality, you know, an obvious benefit to the public good. Um, the mitigation area was proposed for site access within the 50 foot buffer. Um, that area had previously been disturbed um, there was a historic <clears throat> large greenhouse building in the back of this property. Um, so there's existing concrete foundations associated with that that are still out here in the general vicinity. Um, <laughs> we're proposing removing this old foundation. You know, it's going to remove a little bit of impervious for us um, as a, an additional benefit to the site. Um, we've also provided a comment saying that town of Easton is a right to farm community. The construction provides a horse stable and paddock, um, which is in line with the town's right to farm intent, um, promoting, which promotes good public health in an overall vision within the community of Easton. So, so just just as a, a comment to that, so the the, the um, this particular is this is this particular barn meant to have public access to it? No, this this is just um, okay. So I'm just saying, you know, sometimes we go a little bit too far with some of these these public interests, and and I think this is one of those cases where, you know. I agree with the sentiment of what you said. I just don't think it applies to this particular um, project. So um, I know we're just trying to cover all our bases and possibly tick the one thing that's going to tick the one box that's going to be uh, uh, the, the thing that the commission wants to hear. So um, I just think that we have to be a little bit careful that public interest is literally public interest and that one benefits the applicant solely as opposed to the public so i agree with that um i guess you know the proposed mitigation is you know improving the, the wetlands resource you should, kind you of stopped that. at that point yes yeah, yeah sure <laughs> well no i mean removing the concrete yes that's helpful correct and yeah. you, didn't, you didn't mention removing all of the material the junk material that's behind the containers that is supposed to be removed as well. Those would be more of a public interest than the right to farm bylaws. Not doesn't quite fit here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have three. Those three things. For... That is correct. Still a little bit of a stretch, but okay. <laughs> um. Anything else, Jennifer? Uh, no, we have. That's all that you need um, to make your decision. Uh, any comments or concerns from the commission? Um, so, what is the, the the just the one area of concern here? Because the mitigation area from the last project never got done. What what is the timing on getting the mitigation area done? Um, I mean, pending approval, I don't see why we couldn't jump on that portion of this, you know, as soon as this upcoming growing season, uh, which obviously is approaching. Um, it's not really 
connected with the rest of the project, you know, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to tackle that right away. Good, good answer, Peter. Um, so the, the one of the other comments uh, was instead of putting in uh, wetland markers on on posts, is that we locate them on the fence? Is there is that something that the applicant would be willing to do? So did I get that note correct, Jennifer? Yeah, that was something we asked at the last meeting, and then you guys came back and said you thought the horses might knock the post over, but wouldn't they also? Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't catch that. So you guys, over. I mean, if, if these guys have, have, have already talked about that, then I'm okay with that, but I just wanted yeah. to make sure that that was addressed. I, I didn't recall that when I'm watching the second hearing, but I may not have, have caught everything. So. Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I guess, touch quickly on that as far as, you know, why it's not on the fence out back. Um, we definitely don't want the horses getting attracted to them and chewing the signs off the fence. Um, so our intent was just to put them, you know, a couple of feet behind the fence to give them a little bit of separation. Um, okay. You know, the, yes, I, I think that certainly the signs are not for the horses, they're for the humans. And so uh, we, we do want to make sure that they're visible enough and, and, uh, and that they are reminders to people. So I, I'm, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide what to do here so uh, i'm probably going to look to one of you guys to make a motion here as opposed to me so um remember i'm just i'm just guiding this boat right now so okay um and uh, i think you should it, it, jennifer's already written in the conditions to remove that the the materials from behind the containers it typically is but we'll make sure it's in there okay so you guys you might just want to make sure that that's part of your conditions so which I've just mentioned it now, which means it's part of the condition. That's part of the condition. Uh, are we in agreement with the signs and pushing it back past the? I mean, right behind it. They're not going to be more than yeah. 50 feet no. away, but yeah, the 50 foot buffer mark. And that's why I mean, we were trying to save you some wood, but if they need to be behind, then okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Uh, so my motion. Uh, let me just ask for public comment first. Uh, any public comment to Washington Street? Okay, seeing none. Peter, do you want to close? Uh, yes, we would. I, I just don't know if maybe we leave the opportunity for some of the conservation markers to be placed on the fence. Um, I mean, it, like I said, we're pushing it off the fence out of concern of the horse. So in this area to the west, you know, the horse isn't going to be just roaming out in the yard. So we could certainly put the markers on the fence out there. I think that would make a little more sense as the existing markers are, you know, independently on posts. You know, we'll, we'll keep those, but when they're in the fenced area to have the option to go on the fence, maybe. I, I think from, from our standpoint, we prefer them on the fence because it's more visible and it's in the first barrier. But, um, you know, I, I think that's, I think, I, you know, if you work that out with Jennifer, I, I think we're, we're perfectly happy with all of that. At least I'm speaking for myself, who's not a non-voting member on this project, but <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> I think I'm speaking for the I agree. Uh, mission. I saw Al nodding his head, so I guess Al, Al got me going. So. Okay, so, so does someone want to make a motion? Uh, we need a motion to close, and then, um, then we'll do a motion to issue a term for working order commission. All right. I, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, motion to close. <laughs> Second. So that's uh, Spadia, Benson, need a roll call vote? Benson, aye. Crossman, aye. Spadia, aye. And uh, Caulfield is not voting. Um, abstain. Abstain. Um, I need a motion to uh, issue a permit for work and order commissions now. All right. The motion uh, to close for a permit. <laughs> oh, my God. I can never do this. <laughs> issue. Yeah. Issue permit work. In order condition. In order condition. Crossman, <laughs> second. Spadia Crossman, roll call vote. Benson, aye. Crossman, aye. Spadia, aye. And call for lip stands. Okay, Peter. Thank you. All right. I believe that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you. Very good. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time. Yes. Take care.
Okay, so uh, we've done a good job of keeping on track here, so thank you all. Um, 2.30, uh, Jennifer, now we have some enforcement orders here, so why don't you take us through them? Sure. Um, 2.30 Main Street, they did, uh, they're just waiting for the final signature on their contract with their wetland consultant, so they're um, moving along with that one. 346 Foundry, we have an appointment to meet at the property coming up uh, next week, so they're moving along, and 9 Rocky Brook, uh, they've also been in, they ended up needing a duplicate um, order of conditions permit for work. So we prepared one of those and they're um, supposed to have taken it to the registry of deeds to record last week. Um, but then we have one new yeah. uh, violation from last week. We got a call that um, the DPW's project with the PFAS um, treatment plant, uh, extra soil was being dumped in the wetlands off of Prospect Street, um, did the inspection. Yes, it's happening. They've already removed the soil. I'm going back out there again tomorrow uh, to confirm and to give a little bit more guidance on restoration work that's required. Okay. Yep. At, least, at least that one was addressed very quickly, so I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> If you can't get uh, your town partners to get the stuff addressed, then we're in trouble. But so, yeah. thank nope, you for they, your they move very, very quickly and cooperatively. So, yes, of course, they're a great team for sure. Um, any questions from anybody for Jennifer? Um, okay, so uh, next up is uh, minutes. Uh, let's talk about um, first the uh, regular meeting minutes from 313. Anybody have any comments? Oh, man. So there's uh, three times where I voted, but I wasn't at the meeting. So if we could just fix those. So I think the last three. The last three? I think so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on the... Uh, Motion to adjourn, tough tenancy vote, and the, and the about the minutes. So, page seven and then two on page eight. And thank you for including my my notes about John. That would be nice to have it in the yes. record for, for for posterity. So, um, so let's on the next one. So, uh, I make a motion to accept. Uh, the meeting minutes for 313, uh, noting the changes um, regarding my voting. That's page seven and eight. Second. Uh, call fellows Benson second. Roll call vote. Benson aye. Rossman aye. Spady aye. Call yeah, get, get on the same page, will you two? Jeez. Thank you, <laughs> Jumping on each other's, jumping on each other's toes all night. Uh, Al and I are quick. So the, the next one. I think let's just vote to uh, to accept the minutes and then we can release them all at once because then we can decide whether to release them. So we're just voting on the executive session minutes for 313 um, to, to whether to accept the minutes and then we'll, we'll vote whether to release them or not in a separate vote, okay, since we have two others as well. So uh, just as a, the same the same note, yep. um, I voted in the executive session. I didn't attend, so it's on page two. Yep, got it. Thank you. Um, any other changes? Uh, so make a motion to accept the executive session minutes for 313, noting the one change on page two. Crossman second. Nice job. Call fellows, Crossman second. Roll call vote. Benson, aye. Crossman, aye. Baby, aye. Call fellows, aye. Um, so given that the Tufts tenancy has been uh, has been issued. We voted on to, to grant the bid to Solar Shepherd. I, I think we can release these uh, these executive session minutes. So um, I'm going to make a motion to release the executive session minutes for 213, 227, which were previously approved, and 313, which was just approved now. Spade second. Uh, call for Spade a second. Roll call vote. Benson, aye. Rossman, aye. Spady, aye. Call fills, aye. Um, 
chair updates. Um, I have uh, none other than acid rain monitoring collection is this Sunday. So if you see me out in my waders, don't laugh too hard. Okay, so uh, that's uh, really all I have here. So a uh, town meeting is coming up shortly as well. So um, I hope everybody gets a chance. There's nothing conservation on there, but um, you know me. Uh, <coughs> town participation uh, in, in, in government participation is uh, very very big in New England. So want us all to participate. Be one of the 300 people that maybe show up. So, um, Jennifer, a couple of quick things. Welcome, Michelle Thorner. She's our new town, our new clerk. So. Doing a great job. Started last week. Thank you, Michelle. Welcome. Um, the community garden is having a, a work day on Saturday if it doesn't rain. If it does rain, it'll be the following Saturday on April 8th. Anybody who would like to volunteer, you're welcome to do that. Um, the last thing I have is our next agenda is pretty light. We have nothing new. And we only have one continuance um, and one request for an amendment. So, what about all those pools? What about all those pools? Now we're in pool season. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be the next time. <laughs> um, so for the next meeting, uh, we had a list of projects that we wanted to tackle. Um, do you want do you want to take some time at the next meeting to look at reg revisions or open space planning? Do you want to we'll have time. So do you want to do that during what is there something you want to do at the next meeting? So, I mean, I think that, that um, at the very least, we should probably talk about. Um, talk about reg revisions and see what's on our plate um, to see how big that project is. Um, and I think that also maybe as part of that discussion, um, one of the things that's been successful in helping um, guide us um, in general is to establish some guiding principles of um, the regulatory revision projects. And I've got some drafts of some, maybe the most recent one we've used, I think that was from 2020 or so, um, that we can um, perhaps circulate that as well as part of this so that we can maybe decide and agree on what the the, the guiding principles are. What this does is um, it just gives us guardrails of things of like, what are we trying to accomplish, right? So that we don't have to argue about what we're trying to accomplish later on. We can just, we can just discuss, this is what, this is, this is the regulation. How does it fit into our guiding principles? And, and sometimes you might spend 15 or 20 minutes talking a ways around words, a single word in, in this guiding principle, but it actually saves us a long time later on in the discussion uh, where people might have disagreements about what we're trying to accomplish when we've already decided what we're trying to accomplish. I, I think with this group, it, it we're pretty well aligned on that, but I, I think it's probably a good idea to let's put that on paper, yeah. get us all aligned even before we start digging into the words uh, of the, the regulations. It's, it's helped. Mike, Mike's been involved in a couple of these already, and I think it's helped us um, get over disagreements pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. As a new member, it would help me out. Yeah, it's it's very um, it's it's very sh usually short and sweet, um, and it's very overarching, general. Um, you know, this is what we're trying to do. You know, protect the wetlands and all this other stuff, and you know, and what we're trying to do as far as this is concerned. So I'll maybe I'll circulate the last one we approved, and then we can start from there. Um, and it, it really was quite brief. You can see it's just very brief. It's short to the sweet, out of focus, but it's only three or four lines. Okay. And uh, so is there anything, I mean, I have an idea of a few things that I might put in the binder for you to prepare absolutely. you. Is there anything in particular you think you would want that would be helpful for me to prepare for you? No, because you don't even know what we're going to talk about yet. <laughs> I, I think uh, you should put forth as much as you think we can okay. handle in the, in the period of time that we've got. Um, I mean, we should utilize the time we have because, you know, we don't have meetings even like this very often. I mean, we're here at an hour five. So, um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, giving us a couple things to talk about certainly is 
utilizing our time in a, a, a manner that's um, efficient. So that's good. Great. We, we'll uh, we'll look forward to your uh, your suggestions. So. Could we spend some time on those projects that were laid out previously and see if we couldn't get some folks to sign on and make sub committees, if you will, uh, to some, move some of those forward? Yeah, absolutely. That's what uh, Jennifer's intention is to do. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, Al. I think we've had a pretty busy winter uh, with some of these meetings, so it's been a, a bit of a challenge to sort of think about what other things we might be able to accomplish. But, you know, I think we've got some time right now. We should try and get some momentum building behind some of these other things. So. Okay. I need uh, one more motion. Motion to adjourn. Crossman, second. Spady, a crossman, second. Motion to adjourn. Roll call vote. Benson, aye. Crossman, aye. Spady, aye. All fells, aye. Thank you all. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Good job. One hour. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>